Uh, a gun? Yes, a double-barreled shotgun. I'll go get it. Mountain lion! Mountain lion! <laughs> what up, you fool? There's a man coming with a gun. A double-barreled shotgun. <laughs> Beat it, mountain lion. Beat it. Where is it? Oh, uh, Bob, uh, uh, too late. Uh, he's run off. I see him. <laughs> working for anything that isn't the cleanest. Mm -hmm. In city after city, all over America, wherever fine food is served, more and more families are finding out for themselves why only new the way Imperial Melts releases that wonderful taste you love, the sweet, delicate taste of the 70 cent spread. And of course, Imperial gives you the modern health benefits that come from pure, nutritious vegetable oils. Is it any wonder all over America, New Imperial is such a great favorite? Colonel, are you and Maggie Bell and Sister Sue really going to take a vacation in the mountains? Oh, yeah, Kelvin. Uh, that's why I'm clearing up my desk here. Say, uh, where are you going on your sabbatical leave? Well, Maggie Bell and her sister Sue gave me $200 this morning. Oh. And I called another real estate agent I hear the boat, and I rented us a beautiful cabin up in the mountains up there in Monroe County. It's called Sycamore Lodge. Well, when did y'all get up that eyeball this way, Colonel? <laughs> well, I didn't have to look at it, Kelvin. Yeah, you never heard of one real estate man getting gypped by another real estate man, have you? Well, no, but it can't be much of a vacation going away with your wife and her sister, Sue. Hmm, what do you mean, Calvin? Well, it seems to me you're just transferring the nastiness from one locale to another. Well, when you've been as miserable as I have, any change is an improvement. Ah, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Well, I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> Bon voyage and all that sentimental rubbish. Uh oh, hmm. Just take a look at that. I'd better get up there and check our vacation cabin. <laughs> Another woman. Really, Montgomery? 
of course not. I'm soured up on the whole sex. <laughs> well, what's the cabin like you rented? Oh, it's a nice cabin, all right. It's called Sycamore Lodge. Uh, just one thing, uh, there is a little dampness in the living room. <laughs> a little dampness? How much? Oh, about ten feet, but uh, the water receded. They had a little flood up there. Washed out eight or nine houses. Then you get our money back from that real estate agent. Well, I stopped by his office, and it seems that he receded, too. Well, we're not going up there. You just sublet it and get our money back, you hear? Come on, sister. How can I sublet a flooded cottage? <laughs> it would take a skin diver to live up there. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think I know just the big fat frog man to occupy that aquarium. We're hitting the puddles, but it cool. <laughs> No race. There's a motor. <laughs> From here on, Calvin, the trip gets a little rough. <laughs> well, we've been walking for two miles here. When are we going to get to Sycamore Lodge? We're almost there, Calvin. Uh, almost there. Hey, look here, Colonel. What is this salmon doing this far from the water? No, no, that's not a salmon, Calvin. That's a flying fish. He probably flew up to the mountains here to spawn. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope I'm going to like this place that you're renting me. It's a beautiful spot. Pine trees. Smack in the middle, Sycamore Lodge. Fireplaces. Picture windows, luxurious rooms, spacious porches. There it is, Calvin. Sycamore Lodge and all of its grandeur. I guess you're overwhelmed by the rustic splendor, aren't you, Calvin? I must be overwhelmed by something, because all of a sudden I got a dizzy spell. <laughs> well, you're just not used to the mountain air, that's all. Tell me something, Colonel. Uh... If they don't have floods up here, how come the Sycamore Lodge is built on pylons? Uh, ventilation. Under the house there, you got what they call a breezeway. That's the first breezeway I ever saw with barnacles on it. <laughs> Take a look at your beautiful mansion, Calvin. Yeah, I'm anxious to see those spacious living quarters. Now, right this way, Calvin. Now, uh, watch those loose boards there. <laughs> Yeah, now, when you get settled in here, you will find, uh, I say, are you, uh, hmm, that's funny. Uh, Calvin! Hey, Calvin, where are you? He was here a minute ago. I'm down here in the breezeway, Colonel. Calvin, come on up out of there. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now, easy does it, boy. <laughs> well, it's like that with any new place. The boys need a little tightening up. Uh, let's go inside and see the luxurious comfort. That door needs a little tightening up, too. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is all one room. You told me there was five luxurious rooms here. You don't have rooms anymore. You have areas. Now look. You see there? On this side, you've got the sleeping area. And on this side, you've got a nice, spacious three-by-eight living room. Uh, that's spacious, all right. Especially if you're a snake. <laughs> Don't run the place down, Calvin. Now watch this. There you are. A nice four-by-four four dining room. Where's the dining room table? Oh, no, no. Uh, you and your guests eat right off the stove. That way, the food stays warm. Of course, you have to step back into the sleeping area a little here to open the oven. I 
come to Elvin is full of water. Don't ask me. The last tenant must have baked a sponge cake in there. <laughs> now, over here is your two-by-four washing area. I don't know about this place, Colonel. Now, look, Calvin, because you were my best friend, I let you have the place for two glorious weeks for only $200. Now, is that a deal or isn't it? Well, it's not too bad. And there's not every place a fella can sit on his own front porch and catch flying fish. I'll take it. Fine. Now we'll go back to the office and sign the papers. I'll have someone come up from the village and tidy up the place. And you can move in tonight. Uh, I'll close that oven door, will you, Calvin? We want to leave the place nice and neat. Colonel. Oh, uh, down here. Uh, just inspecting the breezeway. <laughs> Captain Sergeant is the cleaningest toothpaste. Cleaningest toothpaste. Cleaningest toothpaste. Captain Sergeant is the cleaningest toothpaste. Helps keep away decay and cleans the stains away. Pepsodent's the very best cause it's the cleaningest. No other leading toothpaste can beat Pepsodent for cleaning your teeth their whitest and brightest. You really wonder where the yellow went. Pepsodent is the cleaningest toothpaste for this good and simple reason. It contains the world's finest tooth cleanser. And do you know one single dentist who doesn't say, the cleaner your teeth are, the safer you are from decay. So for both protection against decay and the whitest, brightest teeth, Pepsodent's the very best cause it's the cleaningest. And stop. Next time you shop, get the Pepsodent toothbrush. It's the cleaningest, too. Montgomery, what do you mean you subleased the cabin? Yeah. Why would you do a stupid thing like that? Now, well, wait a minute, sir. You told me to run it. I got us off the hook by subleasing the place this afternoon to Calvin Burnside. Well, we figured you wouldn't do anything, so we subleased it this afternoon to a Mr. Thompson. How <laughs> dare you double-cross us by doing something good for once in your life. Well, now listen, maybe it's not so bad. Calvin moves in tonight. Maybe I can get him out before Mr. Thompson moves in. He moves in tonight, too. <laughs> Must have shook me up. I'm seeing double. <laughs> Whoever cleaned this place must have pulled all the curtains. <laughs> I wish I hadn't fell down the breezeway and busted my flashlight. <laughs> Three feet. And there I go snoring again before I'm asleep. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute here. I know I don't have two heads. I'm getting hallucinations. I'm going to make a test here. I'm going to reach down and pinch my foot with a sock on it. Oh! That does it. That does it. <laughs> I 
sharing my boudoir. Oh, the colonel rented you the place. Well, then don't you see what he did to you, Calvi, honey? Do I see what he did to me? <laughs> What'd he do? Why, he rented that cabin to you and to someone else at the same time. Hmm. You know, when I think this over, I got an idea I'm going to be real mad at that colonel. <laughs> Now listen, Calvin, will you stop screaming at me? Now listen, I resent that, sir. No use getting hot-headed. I know, but... Uh, but... Oh, uh, but... <laughs> Calvin, I can't give you your money back. Now stop and listen. Now listen, I spent it. But believe me, I worked the thing out. I'm, I'm waiting for my friend, uh, Judge Oliver Wendell Clutch, to get here now. Uh, come in, Judge. Get you every time, don't I, Colonel? Oliver Wendell, what took you so long to get here? I was over in the park making a political speech. Now, that's fine, but uh, what do I do about the mess I'm in? Excuse me, Colonel, but I always think better on a full stomach. Ah, my audience threw quite a few good edibles at me today. <laughs> Colonel, the thing for you to do in this predicament is persuade the alternative tenant to make a precipitous egress from the domicile. Huh? Scare the bum out. <laughs> yes, I'll take Calvin and go up there tonight and scare the man off. Hmm. Someone threw a pool ball. I must be appealing to the wrong element. <laughs> Montgomery, what have you done about straightening out that mess with the cabin? Well, now, don't worry. Calvin and I are going up there tonight and discuss the matter in person with Mr. Thompson. What's all this here? Oh, that's just uh, an orange and some fruit that my friend left. Mmm. This looks good. Oh, go, go, go. Oh, Mr. Thompson's got a pool ball stuck in her mouth. Don't just stand uh, uh, there. Uh, uh, Do something. Get her on the back. No, no. With your hands, Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> Now, why can't I do that down at the pool hall? <laughs> It was nice of you to call, Mrs. Claxon. I was very upset. We're terribly sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir, about the mix-up. My husband down his way up there to straighten it out with you all. Well, I'm not taking any chances up here tonight. After what happened, I went down to the village and bought myself a double-barreled shotgun. Well, I'm sure nothing will go wrong up there tonight, Mr. Thompson. Bye now. You feeling better now, Sister Sue? I'll tell the wawa now. <laughs> If there's any trouble around here tonight, someone's going to get a face full of iron. <laughs> Well, now, here is the cabin, Calvin. Yeah, that Mr. Thompson must be there. The lights are on. You think this scheme of yours is going to scare that man out okay? Well, when we get through with him, he's going to perform self-eviction. <laughs> now, when I go in there, you know what to do out here. Yeah. I hide here in the bushes and I pulls the gimmick. <laughs> Oh, 
Boy, that really sounds like a mountain lion, Calvin. Now, as soon as I get in that cottage, you start making mountain lion noises. Well, I hope this thing don't make a noise like a female mountain lion. Because if a male mountain lion heard it and showed up, I sure hate to see his expression when he found out it was just a tin can. <laughs> Never mind that. Now get over in the bushes. Hmm. I see he's got the breezeway entrance fixed. Yes, yes. What is it? Ah, uh, don't be alarmed, Mr. Thompson. I'm no ferocious monster from out in the woods. I'm only your landlord. Oh, you must be Colonel Claxton. Yes, I just dropped in to see if you were comfortable up here in this lonely, desolate spot. Well, I was telling your wife that I had quite an experience last night. I woke up in the middle of the night, and there was this person in my bed. You don't mean to tell me. Well, at least you weren't sharing the covers with a coyote or something like that. It was a frightening experience. Well, this being such a wild part of the woods, anything might happen. Why, there might, uh... Oh, what was that? Oh, that was just one of those man-eating, ferocious mountain lions that scares the city folks so much. <laughs> He sounds a little hungry tonight, doesn't he? <laughs> I, I didn't realize there was mountain lions up here. Oh, the woods are full of them. Mm. Sounds like he's ready for a blue plate dinner tonight. I'm prepared for something like this. After last night, I went into town and bought myself a gun. A gun? A gun? Huh? A gun? Yes, a double-barreled shotgun. I'll go get it. Mountain lion. Mountain lion. Shut up, you fool. There's a man coming with a gun. A double barrel shotgun. Beat it, mountain lion. Beat it. Where is it? Oh, uh, Bob, uh, 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 too late. Uh, he's run off. I see him. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Something wrong, Mr. Thompson? Seems to me that mountain lion was wearing a straw hat. Claxon, <laughs> I'm moving out. I want my money back. Well, you can move out if you want to, but no refunds. Uh, that was 200 cash, wasn't it? <laughs> Maggie Bell, Sister Sue, hurry up. We want to get up to the cabin before dark. Don't try to rush us, you bloated old windbag. We'll be out when we is ready. <laughs> you get the wood and I'll get the flame and we'll barbecue that sour old dame. <laughs> well, we're all set for Sycamore Lodge. Montgomery, I don't like this idea of us going up to Sycamore Lodge for two weeks. Well, we might as well take advantage of it. Uh, I just couldn't sublet the place. Well, I just hope that place doesn't get flooded out again. Since I left the South, I sandbagged my last levy. Well, listen, after a couple of days of sunshine, the place will be dry as toast. The rainy season is over, you know. Well, all right, Montgomery. We'll just have to make the best of it. What's those stairs, Montgomery? Oh, don't worry about a thing, Maggie Bell. I got everything under control. <laughs> Good morning, Maggie Bell, darling. I brought your breakfast, honey lamb. Well, Montgomery, what did you bring me? A fat back and fried mush. <laughs> Sweets to the sweet, as they say. Thank you. Montgomery, don't I hear rain outside? Of course not. Anyway, the house is on six-foot pilings. No water could possibly get in here, honey lamb. All right, Montgomery. Say, you forgot my coffee. Oh, well, I was waiting for the milk. I'll go out and see if they've left it yet. <laughs> Welcome to Sycamore Lodge. <laughs> Now.
No two women look alike. No two women dress alike. And no two women clean alike. But no matter how you like to clean, there's a new Handy Andy design for you. If you like the new miracle cleaners, you love new Golden Handy Andy. No household cleaner, powder, or liquid out cleans new Golden Handy Andy. Look how fast it gobbles up grease and dirt. But if you like to add the fresh, clean smell of ammonia to your cleaner, here's good news. New White Handy Andy with ammonia. Only new White Handy Andy gives you in one cleaner the cleaning power and ease of miracle cleaners plus ammonia. Smells so clean. Try the Handy Andy designed just for you. New Golden Handy Andy. Or new White Handy Andy with ammonia. They're the all-purpose cleaners that gobble up dirt. Well, Calvin, the vacation is over and back to business. Yeah, I guess Maggie Bell and her sister Sue were a little upset when you got flooded out up at Sycamore Lodge, huh? Well, the three of us sat on the roof of the cabin for a couple of hours and exchanged insults until the Coast Guard come along. Coast Guard? Yes, they sailed us into town. The Salvation Army gave us some dry clothes, and we came back home. Yeah, Colonel, I wondered why you were dressed up better than usual. <laughs> but what gets me is the nerve of that real estate man misrepresenting that miserable cabin to me like he did. I tell you, it's a disgrace to the noble profession of real estate to sell something. Uh, Montgomery J. Clarkson Real Estate. Uh, what's that? Yes, I do have a cottage to sublet for two weeks. Well, uh, picture, if you will, a crystal clear lake. Stately pine trees surrounding its border. And in the middle of this gorgeous setting, beautiful, stately sycamore log. Fireplaces, picture windows, <laughs> the fire of a Calvin and the Colonel was brought to you by... New Improved Imperial. The margarine made to taste the same as the 70 cent spread. Thank <laughs> you.